everyone, I'm Vanessa, and today I'm here to do my March wrap-up. As you might know if you watched my March TBR, I spent the month celebrating middle grade March, and what I did is I went ahead and reread some of my favorite books from when I was a kid, like the books that I loved back in middle school and elementary school. It was really fun to just kind of revisit them. Um, I didn't get to all the things that I wanted to get to, but I got to a good portion of them. So here is my middle grade March wrap up. The first thing that I read, because it was my number one priority, was a Royal Diaries book. I read the Marie Antoinette one. This was really good. Um, if you don't know, these are fictionalized diaries from princesses throughout different cultures and countries in history. These were really fun to read when I was a kid because they really portray the concept that these princesses were all just teenage girls too, and obviously the diaries are fictional, but they also really sparked a big interest in history for me, which I still carry to this day, and even as an adult I really love and enjoy these books. And along those same lines I also read a Dear America book, which are fictionalized diaries from teenage girls throughout American history. This was about a girl who was on board the Titanic, and it was really sad. I remember reading this when I was like 10 or 11 and crying over it and just being so sad, and after I read this, I had to go watch Titanic. As far as I'm concerned, these series still hold up and are valid and enjoyable and fun to read today, even as an almost 30-year-old woman, and my plans have not changed to continue collecting and reading these for the rest of my life. The next thing that I read was an animal arc book, and I read Kittens in the Kitchen. Um, this series, every book is about like different little cute animals that this girl whose parents work for a vet, she kind of like, I don't know, gets into situations with these animals. In this one, there is a litter of kittens born in this like grumpy man's house, and he is giving her a week to find homes for them before, and this is in the book, explicitly stated in the book multiple times, through, it's a big theme, if she doesn't find the kitten's home within a week, he will take care of it himself. And <laughs> I, for one, was really just kind of like taken aback by how something like that was just such a blatant thing in a little kid's book about cute kittens. I don't think it's a bad thing. I think kids deserve realistic portrayals of how things happen in the world, and I think that reading this book for a kid would have definitely helped to instill a sense of responsibility for animals and taking care of animals and what the consequences are if people don't care. So I enjoyed it. I don't think it's a series that I have any need to continue or read other books in, but it was an enjoyable read for what it was. After that I read Shipwreck, which is the first book in the Island series by Gordon Corman. This series, I remember loving it so much when I was a kid. I was actually kind of like really into survival, like stranded on an island stories. I really liked Lost as a teenager. Definitely my go-to favorite pretend game as a kid was like stranded in the wilderness, have to find ways to survive, so it makes sense that I loved these. And this was still really good. Basically this first book is about this group of kids who are all on this program, like a sailing program, because they're all in some kind of trouble. You know, it's kind of like a, like a rehabilitation thing for troubled children, and of course the boat sinks <laughs> and they get stranded on an island. This first book is just about the sinking of the boat, so it was pretty disastrous, but it was interesting and it was fun. I think this is a series that I would continue. Okay, and then the next thing I read was the first book in the iconic Babysitter's Club series. I loved this so much. This was so much cooler than I I remember it being when I was a kid. Like when I was a kid, I was just like, oh cool teenage girls babysitting. This actually deals with so much stuff. Like one of the girls, her parents are divorced and she's having a really hard time accepting that and like accepting that her mom is dating other people. And one of the girls is diabetic and she's afraid to tell the rest of the group that she's diabetic and they all think she has like an eating disorder because she's afraid to tell them the truth. Yeah, it was just a lot more than I remembered and I really enjoyed it and I definitely want to continue this series as well. After after that I picked up Julie of the Wolves. This book, oh my gosh, I loved it so much. I was crazy about wolves. And again, this is one that I think my child brain latched onto certain parts of the story without really recognizing the other things, and now my adult brain is seeing the other things and being like, wow, this book is really freaking good. It's about this young girl who, I think she's Inuit, I don't, it always just says Eskimo, which I know is not 
the term that we are using anymore, but this was written in the 70s, so. But her life has been kind of torn between the two worlds of like her indigenous traditional heritage versus I guess the like whiteification of that where they're, you know, trying to force these people into more like modern lifestyles. And she's kind of running away from that and she ends up lost out in the wilderness and she ends up befriending and becoming adopted by this pack of wolves. And she learns how to communicate with them and become part of the pack. And it's just really beautiful how she finds ways to connect with and survive in the wilderness the same way that her ancestors had been doing for centuries. And when I was a kid, that was definitely the part that I latched onto. I thought it was so cool that she was like one of the wolves and that she was surviving in the wilderness. But as an adult reading it, I realized that there are just so many more important and beautiful themes in this book about, you know, the importance of indigenous people's connection to their traditions and their heritage and how painful and destructive it is that we've taken so much away from them in that regard and just the way that this poor little girl has to feel like she's forced to choose between two different identities and two different lives. It's really sad and this book is really important and really beautiful and yeah, I loved it. After that, I picked up A Replica, which was the first book in a series that I was all about in middle school. This is about a girl who finds out that she is a clone and that she was born out of this scientific experiment to make like super ultra talented humans. And now that she is a teenager, those talents are starting to become apparent and people are starting to notice. And she's being kind of hunted and tracked down by people that are, I don't know, part of the experiment or we're against the experiment. I'm not sure exactly. The first book obviously doesn't have all of the answers to these questions, but it was really enjoyable and I liked it. I think that uh, I would continue the series if the books were easily accessible, but they're kind of really hard to find. So I don't know. It wasn't so good that I think it's worth buying the books to read the rest. But yeah, if they were like at a library or something, I would definitely continue the series. Okay, and then the last middle grade March book that I read was Animorphs and this was so freaking good actually like I loved it so much like I this is one that I am definitely 100% absolutely continuing the series like I'm planning on reading the second book now like I have it already I'm gonna read it it's so good <laughs> if somehow you didn't know about Animorphs or I guess this younger generation like I guess some people these days are so young that they probably didn't read Animorphs when they were kids um it's about this group of teenagers that find an alien and the alien tells them that other evil aliens are invading the world basically go into your ear and then are in control of your body and humans are being controlled by yurks and the alien gives this group of teenagers the power to morph and transform into animals animals in order to help them stop the Yurk invasion. And it is so, it sounds really weird, but it's so good actually. I loved it so much. One thing that I will say is that I really didn't remember how weird Tobias was. And anyone who's familiar with Animorphs knows about Tobias. Um, I was shocked though about just how already in deep with his weirdness he was already in this first book. Um, he's definitely a much different character than I remember him being. <laughs> but yeah, I loved it and I definitely plan on continuing. Okay, and then I read one other thing in March which was not part of my middle grade March thing and that was The Gilded Wolves. I really liked this. Um, unfortunately, I am aware that I read this during a time of great stress and great distraction so I don't think that I was able to follow the plot as deeply as probably is needed for this book because it is a very complex plot. It is a heist story and there's just a lot of like intricate stuff going on that I definitely, <laughs> that all blew right past me. I could not answer a single question about the plot of this book if you needed me to, but I did really enjoy the characters. I definitely got invested in their personalities and like the atmosphere of the book and kind of the general sense and relationship of these people and their world and what they all want. And it was just really, that I can say was really beautiful and really good. Yeah, it was a really good book. I am regretful that I read it during a time that I couldn't fully appreciate the plot, but I definitely appreciated everything else about this book. So that is everything that I read in March. I really enjoyed my reading month and I hope you did too. Let me know in the comments how you are coping with everything and how you are finding, if you are finding the motivation to read and pay attention to books during this time. I would love to hear from you and I hope that I get to talk to you soon. Bye.